Duchess potatoes is a classic French recipe in which the potatoes are peeled, cooked, pureed, then mixed with rich ingredients like cream and yolks, fit into a piping bag with a star tip, and piped into gorgeous towers that are then baked just before serving so they're golden on the outside and creamy on the inside. And they're delicious, but they are a pain to make. They're delicious. And they're beautiful. They're beautiful, but they cool off really quickly. They're yep. just not ideal for cooking at home, but the flavor and the texture are amazing. So we wanted to bring that into the kitchen at home and do a casserole version of it. I like it. Yeah, so we're gonna start with our potatoes and we're using Yukon Golds for this, mm. which are naturally really buttery and rich. We love that. Um, they cook up nice and creamy. So I have three and a half pounds of Yukon Golds and I'm just gonna finish this one up here. So we're gonna cover a couple of really good rules around making any type of mashed potato. The first one is don't cut your potatoes into cubes, cut them into slices. Mm -hmm. So cubes is old school and classic and that's kind of what we're all taught to do. The problem with cubes is the inside takes longer to cook than the outside and you have these kind of irregular pieces to it. Going with half inch thick slices means that the hot water is gonna hit it from all angles and you're gonna get really even cooking. Okay, so I'm going over here. We have cold water so that they heat really evenly mm -hmm. and you don't have the outside sloughing off before the inside is done. So these are covered by about an inch of cold water. I'm gonna bring them up to a simmer over medium high heat. They'll cook for about 18 to 22 minutes. We're looking for a knife to go in and out very, very easily, no resistance. So while those come up to a simmer, we can focus on our enrichments. It's a classic French technique to add, you know, a bunch of richness at the end to a dish. And with pomme puree, a classic French dish, we would just be adding tons of butter, right? Butter, butter, butter. The thing about these potatoes is you actually want them to have some structure as well. And for that, we're gonna use some yolks. Um, so I've got two thirds of a cup of half and half here. I have three yolks. We tested using whole eggs and the whites are really what contribute the eggy flavor in an egg. We didn't really want that. We just wanted the protein to kind of give us that nice structure. Mm -hmm. We've got <laughs> one and three quarter teaspoon salt, half a teaspoon of pepper, and a pinch of nutmeg. A little nutmeg goes a long way. <laughs> That's all <I'll> say. <laughs> so I'm just gonna whisk this together. Okay, we'll finish up our potatoes over here and then it's gonna be time to mash them and put it all together. All right, I think these potatoes are almost done. I'm just gonna check with my paring knife. Mm -hmm. Nice and tender, and that one even just fell apart. <laughs> so it's time to drain these. We'll head over to the sink there. Okay, so I'm gonna set this pot over low heat, and what we're actually gonna do is rice directly mm -hmm. into there, help evaporate more moisture. You can see a lot coming off right now. Yeah. We wanna get rid of all the water we can so that they're nice and rich. I love using a ricer to make mashed potatoes. It makes the creamiest, smoothest texture. I agree, I love it. And it's easy, it just makes it fast. There's something really satisfying about it. <laughs> it's, like, you know? it's like a massive garlic press. <laughs> yeah, <it's... laughs> Those okay. look good already. They look good, right? So you remember when I said that we weren't adding just tons and tons of butter because mm -hmm. it wasn't palm puree? We are adding butter. <laughs> just, <laughs> Thank just, goodness. Just not only butter. We're gonna add eight tablespoons of melted butter. We're gonna add this first, and that's actually really important. If you add fat to the potatoes first and you stir it around, you can coat a lot of those starch granules. It doesn't get gluey. Mm -hmm. If you add your liquid first, there's more chance of it getting gluey. Ooh, those are really fluffy. Aren't they? So now I'm gonna stir in our enrichments that we prepared earlier. Okay, that looks beautiful. Time to go into our casserole dish. So I've got a greased 13 by nine pan here. It looks like it's greased with butter. It is. Okay, so the goal here is to make an even layer on the surface. We're gonna do a nice little decoration on top, but we want a flat base to work from. So now we gotta get into our topping. Egg whites are absolutely necessary. So we're gonna add one egg white. There's a ton of protein in the egg white, which helps it brown, obviously, but it can make it kind of tough if you had like a tough egg white mm -hmm. omelet type setup. So we found that we actually needed to cut that with a couple tablespoons of butter. I'm gonna add just a pinch of salt so this is nice and seasoned. So now we're gonna pour this over the top. You know, you wanna kind of spread it out as much as you can, but we're actually gonna tilt it. Just kind of tilt, let it run into those corners. Beautiful. Now we're gonna do a little design on top. So we're just gonna use a paring knife here and make some lines. You really can get creative with this. You can do anything you want. So you're using the flat side of the knife. Yes, exactly. So that's how I can get a little bit deeper of a channel there. After it souffles and bakes, you'll be able to see it a lot better that way. Okay, so now I'm gonna do more lines this way um, and basically just connecting these points to the corner here. You wanna go about a half inch deep and about a quarter inch wide to finish it off right there. Very cool. Beautiful, right? I love it. So now it's time to bake this. We're gonna go into a 450 degree oven on the middle rack until it is golden brown on top and souffles a little bit. We're gonna rotate it halfway through. It takes about 25 to 30 minutes. Ooh, that looks beautiful. 
Oh man, this looks and smells so good. That is gorgeous. And the nice thing is it's gonna stay warm for a lot longer as well. So we're gonna let this cool for 20 minutes before we dig in because it is piping hot. All right, so these have cooled for 20 minutes. You ready to try these? Mm -hmm. right. Now the souffle did sink a bit, but they're still gorgeous. Oh, absolutely. This would look so good on a holiday table. Oh man, these look so good. Well, and I love that you have this golden crust on the outside, but the creamy interior, because that's the hallmark of a good Duchess potato. Mm. I think you get a better ratio of everything yeah. here, right? It's not like too much exterior. Mm -hmm. You get that incredibly creamy, incredibly light interior. Ooh, these are rich, but they're not eggy. You could forget everything else on the holiday <laughs> table and just eat these. Great job, Dan, these are wonderful. Thank you. So, turns out the key to making Duchess potatoes is to make a casserole. Using three and a half pounds of Yukon Golds, peel and slice them into half inch thick slices, and cover with cold water and simmer gently until tender. Meanwhile, combine half and half with three yolks and some seasonings, also known as the enrichments. Rice the cooked potatoes back into the warm pot, then stir in one stick of melted butter, followed by the enrichments. Spread the potatoes into a casserole dish, cover with a mixture of egg white and butter, then create some texture using the flat side of a paring knife. Finally, finish them in a 450 degree oven for about 30 minutes. And there you have it, from America's Test Kitchen to your kitchen. A fabulous new recipe for Duchess potato casserole. I'm totally making this for the holidays. Oh yeah. Thanks for watching America's Test Kitchen. What'd you think? Well, leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or you can just say hello. You can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. I'll see you later.